Hello beautiful souls, I'm your host Veronica Winters, welcome to Hooked on Art podcast. It's available on all podcast platforms including Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It's also available in a video format on my YouTube channel at Veronica's Art. Please take a second of your time to rate my podcast. If you are interested in contemporary art or you'd like to take a video course, please visit veronicasart.com and subscribe to my monthly studio updates uh, landing right into your inbox. Enjoy the show! Um, Well, it's nice to meet you. (laughs) Nice to see you too. (laughs) Thanks, Emily, for coming to my show. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for having me, Veronica. Please introduce yourself. My name is Emily McElreath. I am an art advisor and curator and the host of the Art Career Podcast. Cool. Very cool. (laughs) Okay. So my uh, first question. Um, in your art career podcast, you interviewed uh, Jerry Saltz, one of the most famous art critics today. Um, what was the most difficult question for you to ask? And what did you learn from this interview? Well, it's interesting because this was actually my first live interview for the podcast I've ever done. Um, we conducted it at NYU who was generous enough to share one of their spaces with the podcast. So just going into it, you know, it, it was nerve wracking because I had never done a live interview before and I had certainly never interviewed Jerry. So I think the most difficult part of it, and you can appreciate this, um, having a podcast was doing the podcast live and, you know, the, the difficulties that come with that, um, and the nerves that come with that. Um, Jerry had the night before the podcast, he was being torn apart by Fox news for saying something about Republicans and going into it. It was interesting because that was kind of on everyone's minds and I didn't know if I was going to ask him about it and Jerry ended up being really open and wanted me to talk to him about everything and for those of you who have heard Jerry speak live he's very generous with his time and we did a Q&A after the interview for quite some time and I think you know probably half the audience were students so I was really happy with the outcomes. There was about 200 people there. And yeah, we just had a really, Jerry's a fun guy. We had a good time. Yeah, but what did you learn about him that you didn't know? I think with my podcast, I really dive deep into people's lives, even more than their careers. Mm -hmm. Um, And learning a few personal things about Jerry's childhood and his mother's suicide and how his mother's suicide actually made him, you know, stop, stop, you know, creating art and, and, um, you know, moving forward with looking at art. I'm sorry, it wasn't creating art. He actually stopped looking at art for a while after his mother's death. And, just learning about him as a person was the most interesting part of it. Mm-hmm. I thought so too, because everything else is quite known from his posts. Yes. <laughs> that he is a hardcore Democrat <laughs> and all other things. <laughs> as, as am I. So he was in good company. Mm-hmm. But uh, I can imagine it's a, uh, it's a nerve-wracking experience to do a live show. I would be flipping out. <laughs> yeah, it it was, but you know, once we started, it it felt organic and good. Okay. Um, how do you organize and curate your art shows? 
how do you find both spaces and artists to participate? So at one point in time, I was running an art space with my ex-partner, Allison Samuel of Pegasus Prince in Brooklyn, and we had a gallery above the silkscreen studio. So that it was mostly during COVID, you know, we were able to curate shows in that space. So that was lucky. I, I actually lived and worked within the space in East Williamsburg, Brooklyn. Before that, um, I've really taken advantage of any space that has been offered to me. Shashama was kind enough, Anita Durst, shared a space on the Lower East Side with me um, in 2019, and I curated nine artists um, in that space. And since then, I've curated online exhibitions. I was just saying this to someone recently. Um, I miss curating. I haven't curated a show in so long because, as you know, the podcast takes up so much time and I have that and I have my business, my art advisory. So I haven't curated recently and I think it's something that I'm looking forward to doing in the fall. I've also taken part in spring break a number of times. Um, Amber and Andrew are wonderful and what they do for the art community is, is really, really great. So I've, um, I've, done three spring break exhibitions. Are these non non-profit uh, spaces or commercial gallery spaces? I, I'm not familiar with Oh, New York, yes, so. spring break. They've been doing it in Ralph Lauren's old office spaces um, on Madison. I think it's Ma Madison Avenue um, mm -hmm. recently, but they've done it in all different spaces around men possibly Brooklyn, but Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And what was the goal of those uh, exhibitions? Well, Spring Break is a fair in New York and LA, and and it, it serves as any, you know, art fair. There are mm -hmm. hundreds of curators and galleries and artists that um, it's a, it's a curator based art fair. So we as curators apply with a show in mind um, and, you know, hopefully get accepted. And, and then, yeah, it's, it, um, it's conducted as an art fair. I see. So they're no. selling works. Yeah. I see. Now it makes a lot more sense. <laughs> so how do you find your artists for your projects? Like what's the process? Yeah, I, I've been involved in the art community for, you know, almost 20 years now. And what I'm really proud of is the fact that I've built um, quite a substantial community of wonderful artists, curators, um, dealers. You know, I, I have a, a very rich community. And so I'm very familiar with so many artists. And just like with anything... If I don't know an artist, another artist or another dealer or curator or gallerist will turn me on to that artist. Um, I used to find a lot of artists on Instagram. Uh, yeah, but usually by being introduced to them by other artists. So is there a way for any artist to just introduce himself or herself to you? Like, what do you expect to hear? Like, what do you expect to see? I think oftentimes, you know, what we call cold calls in the art world where, you know, I certainly try to open every single email or DM that's sent to me. Um, oftentimes it, 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 is more likely to get my attention if there is a contact in common, like there's another artist or someone like I was just talking about that introduces me to that artist. But I do open emails. And what I will say is the shorter, the better. 
when I get an email that is a million pages long with a hundred artworks, I, I, I rarely have time to really uh, mm -hmm. take it all in. So my advice is, is always the shorter, the better when you are reaching out to, you know, gallerists, curators, anyone for the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. I I think it is important to be short and sweet. I also get a ton of emails. And at this point, I can't even open them all. I know, I know. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I think it's important that, you know, every artist also kind of has some sort of deck, whatever that looks like, right? It's very overwhelming, first of all, when you send a million attachments. I can't even look at those. So I tell the artists I work with, it's nice to make like a pitch deck with your, you know, your strongest pieces, your strongest shows, you know, if you have any press, you know, attach that, but basically just um, a document that looks nice visually that you're sharing your, your strongest stuff. Um, like yeah. a two uh, a two page PDF. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, what's the process of uh, curating art as an art advisor? Like, w what's the whole idea behind that? Well, I don't really curate art as an art advisor. I just curate art as as me and as a curator. And I don't like I consider myself an independent curator. I think, you know, many lines have become blurred in the past five years. You don't have to have a specific title. Mm -hmm. Anyone can curate a show, right? If you have mm -hmm. a space and you have an artist to work with, anyone can curate a show. And I don't really think I understood that early on in my career. I thought you needed to have a certain amount of expertise, which you do to a certain extent, but you see people curating shows in their living rooms. You see cur mm -hmm. people curating shows outdoors in public spaces. You know, there's, there's so much opportunity to get creative with a curatorial practice. That phrase seems so daunting and snobby, curatorial practice, but it's really, you know, anyone can show artwork. Anyone can. And mm -hmm. for me, I just you know, I, I was working with artists as an art advisor all the time. My background is in art education. I was director uh, of education at a foundation for almost seven years before I went out on my own as an entrepreneur. Um, so, you know, I got to a point where I really wanted to start showing artists myself. That's the reason why you left that position? You wanted to be on your own? Is yeah, that I always wanted to be on my own. Yes, I, I think I always knew that I wanted to work for myself. But you can't do that right away in your career. You know, I think you need to gain enough experience um, before you go out on your own because it's not easy to do that. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the most difficult part about it? being poor at first, probably, mm -hmm. you know, like mm -hmm. going from anyone, you know, unless they have backing or, or come from a lot of money, obviously, you know, it's, you go from having a very steady paycheck to starting your own business. And with that comes, you know, it, it takes a while to, um, to really get yourself up and running and, and start making money, you know? And so mm -hmm. that's the most difficult. I think that that's why most people don't make it as an, uh, you know, as a self-starter, as an entrepreneur with their own small businesses, because um, despite how many people tell them it's going to be difficult, you know, you really have to, be ready to be completely self-sufficient. I mean, it took me a few years before I was in a place of complete financial security in terms of like, I had nothing to worry about. And I, and, and I was able to really um, 
have a quality of life that I want to have, you know? So you have to kind of be ready to, you have to be very scrappy and you have to, um, and sometimes it's a lot easier for people, you know, some people start making a ton of money right away. Um, most don't, and you have to be able to get through that time until you do. How did you support yourself? What, what you are, what you are sharing is very common for any artistic profession. Yes. And I think you curators experience a lot of um, struggles that artists experience as well. Yes. So how did you uh, support yourself as you kept working on your own business? Yeah, I did. Um, I, there was a lot of side hustle. I was working with a lot of artists one on one, um, doing art advising in terms of working with artists one on one. And I was lucky enough, I had clients right off the bat when I became an art advisor. Um, mm -hmm. So I always I but I never took a loan out. I was never given money. Um, so I figured it out. You figure it out. You know, you do whatever you need to do to figure it out. Because mm -hmm. um, I spent a lot of my time teaching for the most part. And that was, um, I think it's a very good way of making a living. Absolutely. Um, so how do you find lines for your business, for your art advisory business? It's business? almost always word of mouth um that that's how i find them it's not with art advisory especially when you're working with um clients that are very serious about collecting you're not really and there's no like cold calling you can market yourself but it's mostly experience word of mouth um getting to know the right people. It, I think it's good for art, um, for artists to hear <laughs> uh, because it's all about networking. It's all about networking. Yeah. Really, mm -hmm. I can't stress that enough. It's all about networking. Mm -hmm. Well, how do you break barriers? How do you connect to the right people? I think that's a, you know, that's a, that's a tough question. That's, that's, you know, it's making sure you are at the events, the openings that you're, you're taking advantage of um, any opportunity that colleagues share with you. It's, you know, it's, um, it's kind of tapping into the right circles and networking always. Yeah, but how do you network? Is it the meeting uh, people at the receptions? Is it walking in and introducing yourself? No, it's not. And that's, it's, it's really who you know starting out and then building on that. Like, I'm being honest. It's not, mm -hmm. I think, like, a lot of it, yeah, you can like walk into spaces and introduce yourself. And I do that a lot, but it's also making a name for yourself and being known. And um, yeah, so I don't really know how to answer that question. And I don't think there mm -hmm. is an answer to that question. It's showing up when you have to show up. It's building relationships. It's having mentors. It's, it's, you know, constantly upping your game. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's, <laughs> it, it is a tough question because what you're saying is, is actually what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you advise on? Like whenever I see this title, art advisor, um, it might mean a million. I mean, I have a million ideas and questions about it. Like, what is it about? I help people build art collections. Art collections? Yes. Do you pick famous artists do you pick up-and-coming artists do you 
big those everything from emerging to famous blue chip artists Mm -hmm. and how do you decide on that like um do the collectors tell you what yes yes and and i share with collectors you know artists that i think they would like all the time um oftentimes a collector will say i'm interested in this artist and then i go out and i find all availability for said artist for them why don't they just reach out uh directly why well, you can say that about anything right why is there financial advisors why is there you know you can say because people don't have people don't have time and they want to be led and Oftentimes they're not educated in the art industry because that's not what they do for a living. So they hire someone that they trust to be able to navigate the art market for them. Mm -hmm. And what are the considerations for them to purchase a particular artist? Is it um, investment reasons? It totally depends. It totally depends. I don't like working with um clients that are only in it for investment reasons um contractually they have to hold on to a piece of artwork for a certain amount of time but investment is uh, look when you're spending a lot of money on a piece of art investment is always something that should be kept Mm -hmm. in mind you know um is this is this artist going to appreciate you know and nothing is a sure thing we're dealing with an unregulated market but people that are involved in the art world on a daily basis have um, best case scenario knowledge on what's happening. But no, it's based on investment. It's based on love of art. It's based on what you want to look at every day. It's based on taste. It's based on, you know, family. It's the list goes on Mm -hmm. based on support with, you know, emerging artists. It's based on sometimes supporting those artists. Mm -hmm. Tell me why New York remains a major pipeline for new artists to develop their careers. Oh, God, because it's New York. Yeah, but tell me why. Because it's New York. (laughs) That's really, I like, there's, there's nothing I can say about that without sounding like a total art snob. It's New York and it's... with that said, I think in the past four years, so much has become decentralized, right? You don't have to be in New York to be uh, successful in the art world as anyone in, in the art industry. But, you know, New York is is New York. It's, it's you know, the art center of the world. And mm-hmm. it always will be, I think. Yeah, I think uh, most, well, not most, but many uh, uh, established artists went through through New York, you know, went through that network. But again, um, you don't have, you know, it's as much as I say that, it, 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 again, as everything becomes decentralized, and it has been, I mean, You do not have to be in New York to be a successful anyone in the art Mm -hmm. industry. It's just easy to network in person Mm -hmm. in New York. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Because you do establish relationships with people and most people are in New York and LA. (laughs) Um, uh, Many, many people are. Yeah. So please share how artists can market their art effectively. You know, I think that although Instagram is very difficult right now and the algorithm Mm -hmm. has changed, it's really important to have a strong Instagram. It's really important that your website looks good. You know, I can't tell you how many artists I work with that I go on their website and you know, it's just over, there's a million artworks on it. It's cluttered. It's messy. Um, it's important to have website, a strong Instagram. And it's important, like I said, in the beginning of this talk, you know, it's not the cold calling that's going to get you seen. It's 
building relationships with other artists. That is the most important thing an artist can do is mm -hmm. build relationships with other artists. And then everyone supports each other and everyone markets, you know, work mm -hmm. for each other. So it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's a community based approach. Yeah, if you find the artists who are supportive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I also think like things like building an email list, you know, um, that's always important with social media. That's fleeting. You don't get to you, you don't get ownership of anyone on social media. Once you have someone's email, you always have their email unless they um take themselves off unsubscribe from your emails you know i think that that's a really strong way to you know build a community as well mm -hmm. so what do you want to see on uh, the artist's websites i just like i i like it when it's clean you know similar to the deck just the strongest work of the artist i never like a really long artist statement i think it should you know, have an artist CV bio, um, a very brief statement about them and their work. And then in terms of what is on the actual website, just as like clean and minimal as possible. So you basically can skip through it to understand who the artist is. Yeah, I want to be able to open someone's website and kind of really understand who they are as an artist, you know, just from the homepage. Mm hmm okay yeah sounds good <laughs> why do you think art is important i think art is the driving force behind any sort of healing we do as human beings to some extent whether that's fine art music writing um i know how much art has saved people's lives and will continue until the end of time and i don't think it's um given enough credit and you know i think no matter who you are to some extent it's 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 art that is the driving force of you know life as for human beings that's mm -hmm. a sweet answer <laughs> you organize private art tours yes um, yes tell me more about that and please share your most vivid experience about it so i've toured many different groups you know i used to do um uh gallery walks in chelsea all the time i've toured uh, many groups through New York museums. Um, again, it's meeting the right people, having, you know, a certain business or corporation that wants, is in New York for a week and wants to have an art experience. Um, and probably the, I don't know, there have been so many memorable experiences, but I toured um, a group of, it was it was a it was a fashion brand that i toured through the warhol exhibition at the new whitney a few years ago um and that was really memorable but you know it's walking through some of like the best exhibitions in the world or or galleries and just just sharing art with people it's so much fun i haven't done it in quite some time again this podcast has kept me so busy over the past year but that was something that i used to do a lot in my career and a great way to make money on the side back to your initial question you know that's what i was doing i was doing a lot of those private bespoke tours when i was trying to support myself in the beginning of starting my business what what galleries and museums did you visit in particular is like was there a specific list or you listen to your guests uh, i would listen to my guests the guests would say oh there's the you know this exhibition hockney exhibition at the met i would love to bring a group to you know and i would do that um and galleries whatever gallery i mean that depends on 
you know, if someone wants to tour in September, I look at the galleries and what they're showing and I put together, you know, a curated list of shows to see. So who were your most famous um, guests on those tours? Um, I usually don't share names oh, okay. or anything. Um, <laughs> That's but, okay. Yeah, yeah. What's the most vivid experience about that? It was probably walking someone very important through an exhibition at the Brandt Foundation years and years ago. Uh, it was a Warhol exhibition at the Brandt Foundation. Um, and I'm no Warhol expert, but he is one of my favorite artists. And I do know a lot about his life and career. So that's always really fun for me to be able to share that knowledge with others. Tell me why he is your favorite artist. I think he just changed the canon. I think he changed so much about, you know, we see appropriation now and it's so common and still so controversial and you know he was able to incorporate such a different approach to artwork and what i also love about warhol is that it wasn't just fine art for him and it's not just fine art for me he was very involved in the music community and the fashion community you know he blended all of these personalities and talents together to build his community and you know i've always just deeply respected that about him i see do you have any other famous oh well not famous but like your favorite artist you'd oh. like to share yeah i mean Lisa Yuskovich has always been one of my favorite artists. Um, there's, Why? Have you seen her paintings? Yes. So, Why? Um, her color palette. I've never seen anyone use green like Lisa uses green. Um, okay. That's a difficult color. And yeah, I just fell in love with her, her work years and years ago. So there is no specific reason you just love it. I just told you, I said, I love yeah. the color palette. I think the color palette is, you know, her colors that she uses and how she uses color is, you know, I've, I've never seen it done before. Like she does it and okay. I love the subject matter, but it's the brilliance mm -hmm. of the color. Okay. All right, makes sense. <laughs> so what's your next project that you're working on? My next project is the podcast. I mean, that's really what I've been concentrating on so much. Um, we're wrapping up <clears throat> season three. Season four will be in the fall, but I'm excited. Um, actually, I'm not going to announce what I'm, I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to be doing a really fun mini series in the podcast that I've never done before. And that'll be released in the next couple of weeks. But, you know, a lot of what I'm working on right now is building my podcast and my numbers and the reach of my podcast and making sure the content that I'm putting out there is best case scenario for our listeners. I'm really passionate about it. And love interviewing people i really do um and so you know my hope is to share that with as many people as possible but what's the goal of your podcast what do you want to achieve with it i want i want to achieve as i want to be one of the top art podcasts in the world i want to achieve a very large listener base because I think that my approach to interviewing um, is unique. And I think in a world that is so, and you're doing something very similar, you know, in a world that can be seen as so daunting and shallow at times, I'm really never asking artists about their actual work. It's more about their lives. And it's, and it's really been beneficial for younger creatives 
to understand, you know, what goes into an artist's journey. And that includes, you know, social activism, mental health, family, friends, um, you know, it's not, it's, it's not just the, the CV, you know, it's so much more than that. And to get to know these creatives on a deeper level, I just want to be able to share that with as many people as possible. Um, do you paint yourself? I used to paint, I used to make paintings. And then I realized that I would probably be able to be a really good mediocre painter. Um, but for me, I like to be really good, the best at what I'm doing. And I knew that doing everything that I've done in the past 10 years, I was more passionate about that than making paintings. And so I got to a point where I, I really just like gave the paintbrush up. I'm sure that I'll paint again when I have time. I don't have time to make paintings right now. Um, but yes, I used to paint a lot. Why are you so passionate about podcasting? Because it's getting to connect with humanity in a deeper and different level than you would ever have an opportunity to meeting someone at a party or going to someone's art exhibition or reading someone's book. You know, it's mm -hmm. being able to sit down and within an hour, you sometimes know this person on a deeper level than you know some of your own friends. Um, and that's just very intriguing to me. Mm -hmm. So how did you come to art? Like, why, why is it art, not accounting? I don't know. <laughs> well, because I'm horrible at math and art has just always been kind of the driving force in my life from a really young age. It's art 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 every type of art and that's it <laughs> kind of like <laughs> however i have i'm very business oriented too so it's actually not just art it's art and business and mm -hmm. um yeah but it was never going to be medicine or accounting or law it was just it was never going to be nor would i have made it through the schooling for that so yeah i i think it's a it's a strange path and no person is alike it's like everyone is so different and how they pursue or achieve their goals that's for sure there is not yeah it's not a one size fits all it's not if you do this this and this this will happen was your family supportive of you yeah when... i'm the only one that works in the art world in my entire extended family um so i'm very different from everyone but yes they've always been very supportive of me oh that's good because otherwise it's very hard <laughs> yes yes it makes it harder that's for sure What's one question you'd like to be asked, but you're never asked? I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a good answer to that right now. And I don't want to just throw something out to throw it out. I was interviewed for the podcast, for my podcast, and that will be released, I think, either next week or the week after. So I really deep dive into um my life and some of my struggles and what's you know uh gotten me to where i am so i was able to answer a lot of the questions during that interview i encourage you to listen to the art career podcast and subscribe and you know listen to all the wonderful uh creatives i've interviewed in the past as well uh please tell people how they can find you yeah, so the Art Career Podcast is available on every podcast platform. So whether you're Spotify, Apple, just the Art Career, and you'll see a picture of me on a subway, and that's my podcast. We're on season three, 
um, right now. But yeah, if you just Google the the Art Career Podcast, you should be able to find all the episodes on any platform. You're also on Instagram, right? I'm also on Instagram. Yes, I am on Instagram as I have two Instagrams. I have the Art Career Instagram, which is at the Art Career. And then I have my my Instagram, my my other business Instagram, which is at Emily McElreath um, underscore art. Very good. Well, I'd like to thank you for your contribution to the arts and for your support of uh, contemporary artists. Yeah. Um, Veronica, thank you so much for doing what you do and um, you know, building a dialogue around art and what moves us and helping the community in all the ways you are as well. I really appreciate you. <laughs> thank you. Well, I'll talk to you later then. All right. Thanks, Veronica. Take okay. care. If you like this video, please uh, share it with your friends, uh, leave a comment or rate this podcast. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.